with our definition of length of vectors in Rn, we can now define the standard inner product on Rn. If you've had multivariable calculus, when we're looking at R2 or R3, this inner product is just the dot product. Now, what does an inner product do? It's going to be a gadget that takes two vectors, returns a number. In some sense, this number is going to tell us how much one of the vectors is moving in the direction of the other vector. So first, let's do some mechanics. Now, we have our definition of length of a vector in Rn. Suppose v is given by x1 through xn. Then the length of v is just given as the square root of the sum of the squares of the x's. I'll have another vector, w. So that'll be y1 through yn. I want to assume that v and w are perpendicular. So what I mean by this is, we take the plane spanned by v and w, okay, assuming that they do span a plane. Then in that plane, we assume that they're at right angles. Now, since I have a right angle here, we can take the lengths of each of these vectors. And then I'll have the length of v squared plus the length of w squared is equal to the length of v plus w squared by the Pythagorean theorem. Now, let's crunch the numbers. So if I take the length squared of v plus w, okay, each coordinate's now going to be x sub i plus y sub i. So the length squared is just the sum of x sub i plus y sub i squared, and then we can expand that out. If we take the length of v squared, add it to the length of w squared, we're going to have the sum over x sub i squared plus y sub i squared. So we know by taking the difference, we're going to be left with these middle terms. We take their sum, set it equal to 0. Now we can throw away the 2. So what we're going to have is two vectors are at right angles in the plane that they span. Okay, we also call this orthogonal. If and only if, this gadget here is equal to 0. So if we suspect that two vectors are at a right angle, we compute the sum, see if it's equal to 0. In general, we'll call the sum the standard inner product of v and w. Now, for an R2, if I have a non-zero vector x, y, a recipe for finding a perpendicular vector is just to switch the entries, put a minus sign on one of them. Now, if we take the inner product, what comes out is zero, which confirms our perpendicular result. On the other hand, if we take the inner product of a vector with itself, what comes out is the length of our vector squared. Now, here we see two extremes. On the one hand, if our first vector is not going in the direction of the second vector at all, okay, if they're at a right angle, then the inner product is equal to zero. On the other hand, if our first vector is going in the same direction as the second vector and by the same amount, we get the length squared. So we see here that somehow the inner product is taking our two vectors and measuring how much one points in the direction of the other one and vice versa. Now, that idea is made precise by the following formula. So we have our vectors v and w, we have the angle between them theta, then the inner product of v and w is equal to the length of v times the length of w times the cosine of theta. Now, check what we just worked out. If our vectors are at a right angle, then theta equals pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is equal to 0. So the inner product of v and w is equal to 0. If I put a vector in with itself, then the angle between those two vectors is 0. The cosine of 0 is equal to 1. So I get the length of our vector v squared. Now, on the previous board, I had an if and only if. I only showed one direction, so let's use our formula to show the other direction. Now, if I have the inner product of v and w equal to zero, okay, in this case we call v and w orthogonal vectors, then if v and w are non-zero, that means that the cosine has to be equal to zero, which means the angle between them is equal to pi over two, 
if we're insisting on angles between 0 and pi. So that means the angle between V and W is equal to 90 degrees or pi halves. To show our formula, we write the length of V minus W quantity squared in two different ways. One of these ways will use the law of cosines. Now, let's put a picture on the board. So our two vectors, V and W, the angle between them we call theta. I'm going to draw in minus W, and then we're going to translate that to the head of V. So we could draw in the vector V minus W as so. Now, this angle here is also going to be theta. So let's calculate the length of V minus W squared. Just doing it algebraically, I'm going to get the sum of Xi minus Yi squared. We can expand this, and then when we take the sum of each term, we'll have the length of V squared plus the length of W squared minus twice the inner product of V and W. On the other hand, using the law of cosines, so we have, okay, this side is length V, this side is length W, this side is length V minus W, and we have included angle theta. So law of cosine says the length of V minus W squared is equal to the length of V squared plus the length of W squared minus twice the length of V times the length of W times the cosine of theta. Now, these are equal, so when I clean things up, what we'll be left with is our inner product is equal to the product of our lengths times cosine theta, and that's our formula. Now, if we move the lengths to the other side, we get a formula for cosine. So, let's find the angle between the two vectors in R2. So I have V equal to 2 squared to 2 and W equal to 2 minus square root of 2. I calculate the lengths, so they're each going to be equal to square root of 6. If we take the dot product of V and W, we want to have 2 times 2 is 4, plus square root of 2 times minus square root of 2 is minus 2. So the dot product is just 2. We divide by the lengths, the product of the lengths is 6. So our cosine is going to be equal to 1 third. To solve for this, I go to my calculator. So we're looking for theta equal to the inverse cosine of 1 third which is 1.23 radians, or 70.5 degrees. Okay, this, we draw the picture, and we can see that that's going to be in the ballpark. Another example, so we'll use vectors in R3. So I'll have V equal to 1, 0, 1, and W equal to 1, 2, 2. We find the length of each vector, so I'll have square root of 2 and 3. We use our formula, so the dot product here is going to be 1 times 1 plus 0 times 2 plus 1 times 2. So the dot product is equal to 3. We divide by the product of the lengths, and that gives me 1 over square root of 2, or square root of 2 over 2. Now, this is a familiar angle, so we're going to have that our angle is equal to pi over 4. To finish, we note the bilinear properties of the inner product. So all these say is that if we take a linear combination, take the inner product of that linear combination with a vector. It's legal to break up the linear combination and then take the inner product with each piece. Now, we could do that in either slot. We also have the symmetric property. So this says if we take the inner product of V and W, get the same answer as if we took the inner product of W and V. Now, each of these is straightforward, so I'll leave it to you to verify them. And we know we really don't use these except when we're working abstractly. Now, here's a problem that's a little bit artificial, but it'll get the idea across. Let's take the inner product of 2, 3 with minus 3, 2. So we could do this straight off using the inner product to see that we get 0 as expected. But instead, I want to expand everything into linear combinations, and then we'll use our rules for bilinearity. So I can write 2, 3 as 2 times 1, 0, plus 3 times 0, 1, against minus 3, 2, which is minus 3, 1, 0, plus 2, 0, 1. So for the next line, I'm going to use notation for the standard basis vectors. 1, 0 is E1. 0, 1 is E2. My first move is to break up the linear combination we have in the first slot. 
So it's going to give me two sums. We'll have the 2e1 and the 3e2. Okay, and I pull the 3 to the outside. Then, for each of these, I could break up the linear combination in the second slot. So that's going to give us these expressions here. Now if we calculate using the inner product, okay, I'll have the e1 with itself is 1, e1 and e2 is 0, and e2 with itself is 1. So that's going to get me to minus 6 plus 6, which is equal to 0, which agrees with our answer if we did it in a straightforward manner.